Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. In this video, what we're going to start looking at is uh, bacterial drug transporters, i.e. proteins in the uh, membrane of the bacterial cell, uh, which are capable of uh, removing a uh, drug from the uh, cytoplasm of the cell and extruding it onto the um, extracellular fluid, basically. Okay, so bacterial drug transporters. And in this video, what we're going to look at is the five major classes of uh, bacterial drug transporters. We're going to give examples of each of them, and then we're going to have a bit of a general discussion about, um, about what uh, their specificities are like, and uh, a bit of an introduction to basically their physiological function, and the fact that they must have some physiological function beyond just transporting the drug, basically. Okay, right, so, we'll draw out the five major families of bacterial drug transporters in our membrane here. So let's say this is our phospholipid bi there here that surrounds our bacterial cell. Then let's start over here. Okay, so this is a the first type of bacterial drug transporter. And we are going to look in laborious detail later at how these uh, each one of these types of drug transporter actually functions. But for now, we're just going to introduce their names, basically. Okay, so these first ones are known as ABC transporters. So ABC transporters. Okay, whoops, this is probably not going to all fit on on one line now because I've put that there. Right, so ABC transporters stands for ATP, so that's the A, uh, binding cassette transporters. Okay, so an ATP binding cassette transporter, or an ABC transporter. Okay, and these transporters uh, work by a primary transport, basically. They use ATP in order to, um, they use the hydrolysis of ATP uh, in order to fuel their transport of whatever molecule they are transporting, whether it be a drug or anything else. Okay, so these ones are primary active transport there, therefore, because they are taking adenosine triphosphate and they are hydrolyzing it into adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate in order to release the energy that is fueling their, um, their movement of whatever the drug or the molecule that they're moving is um, out of the cell. So these are ABC transporters in purple here. Okay, and again, the name stands for ATP binding cassette transporters. So ABC transporters work by primary um, active transport. Okay, so let's write that up here. And in fact, of all the five families that are found in bacterial cells, they are the only ones which work by primary active transport. All the others work by secondary active transport. So by primary active transport, I mean uh, the uh, the hydrolysis of ATP releases the energy that then is allowed to move one, the compound from one side of the membrane to the other. That's what primary active transport means. It means that the energy to do that maneuver comes from the hydrolysis of ATP. And they're the only uh, family of transporters in bacterial drug uh, transporters which actually are primary active transporters. So I just want to stress that the ABC transporters, it's not just one transporter, they are an entire family. There are absolutely loads of these things. And uh, some examples which we're going to see again and again are things such as ABCB1. We're going to see ABCB1 a lot. Uh, another example is the LMRA. So LMRA is an example of an ABC transporter. And finally, another one is MSBA, so MSBA. So these are all examples of ABC transporters which can transport uh, drug molecules across a membrane. Okay, right, uh, the next 
class then. And in fact, all classes after this are going to work by second reactive transport. So I think before we discuss the next uh, four classes, let's discuss uh, what they're actually going to uh, do with regards to second reactive transport. Or in fact, actually, maybe we should discuss, we sh we'll discuss one of them, and then we'll discuss second reactive transport, just so that I have something to point at uh, when I'm sort of talking about second reactive transporters. Okay, so this next class, which we'll draw in here, and at the moment I'm just drawing them as boxes, but believe me, we will look at their structures uh, in later videos. Okay, so we'll have this one in blue, okay? And this one is going to be the family of SMR, okay? SMR transporters is this next family, okay? And SMR stands for Small Multidrug Resistance Transporters, okay? So these are small multidrug, small multidrug resistance transporters. So small multidrug resistance transporters. And these, again, are uh, proteins in the membrane of the bacterial cell uh, which are going to be capable of grabbing a drug molecule from the cytoplasm of the cell and moving it fr um, from the cytoplasm of the cell to the extracellular aspect of the cell, or in this, if it's, the, if it's a gram-negative bacterium, it will be into the periplasmic space. Okay, right, so these, all of the proteins that are in this family, and again, it's not just one protein, it's loads of proteins that are all grouped together in this one great family. Um, all of these proteins act by secondary active transport. Now, basically, secondary active transport, uh, you do not fuel, you do not get the energy for this uh, maneuver of the drug molecule. You don't get that from ATP in secondary active transport. Instead, what you do is you couple the movement of the drug molecule out to the movement of another ion down its concentration gradient. Now, so what ion are we going to couple uh, the movement of the drug uh, to, basically? Well, we're going to move a couple it to protons. Okay, so in bacterial cells, let me draw a bacterial cell down here. In bacterial cells, um, the proton concentration inside the cytoplasm is very low, whereas the proton concentration outside of the, uh, on the outer aspect of the membrane is very high. Now, why is this? Well, basically, what you have to remember is that bacteria have no intracellular organelles. They do not have mitochondria. So where does their electron transport chain take place? Instead, it takes place on the outer cell membrane. So in the outer cell membrane, you have the complexes of the electron transport chain. In some bacteria, anyway, some bacteria don't make their energy at all by the electron transport chain. Instead, they make their energy uh, by fermentation processes. We'll discuss those in a moment. So, uh, bacteria which do use the electron transport chain, the ETC here, uh, basically, uh, they are going to um, be pumping protons out onto the uh, outer aspect of their membranes, basically. And that's going to create a high concentration of protons on the outside of the membrane and a low concentration of uh, protons on the inside of the membrane. So this is the electron transport chain, the ETC. Okay, so they're going to pass electrons along these complexes of the electron transport chain. And as the electrons get passed along these complexes, the energy of those electrons is going to be reduced. And the energy that is um, released from those electrons is going to be used to uh, pump the protons from the cytoplasm to the outer uh, leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. Okay. Now, that creates two things. It creates, a, firstly, a proton concentration gradient, where you have a much higher concentration of protons on the outer side of the membrane than you do on the in, in, inner side of the membrane. It also creates an electrical potential difference across this membrane, because the protons have a positive charge. So you're going to raise the electrical potential of the extracellular, um, extracellular side, 
and you're going to reduce the uh, electrical potential of the intracellular side. So overall, you're now going to have an electrical potential difference between the extracellular side and the intracellular side. Protons have a positive charge. They will want to go to the area with the lower electrical potential, i.e. the intracellular compartment. So two gradients are uh, pulling, well, are favoring the movement of protons back in. Firstly, the concentration gradient, which is um, uh, favoring the movement of protons back in, i.e. high proton concentration extracellularly and low proton concentration intracellularly. And secondly, this electrical potential gradient here, which is also favoring the movement of protons back into the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, so what you can do basically, is you can couple the movement of that, say, the drug or whatever other compound it is that you're trying to extrude from the cytoplasm of the cell. You can couple the movement of the drug out to the movement of the proton in, and that then is secondary active transport, where you use an established ion gradient across a membrane um, to you use the driving force of that gr uh, ionic gradient across a membrane in order to couple it to the movement of another compound that you're trying to move. And that then is secondary active transport. Okay, now that is in uh, bacteria where you have an electron transport chain. What about bacteria which use fermentation to produce their ATP? Okay, so in bacteria which produce their energy, their ATP, from fermentation, uh, then instead of having an electron transport chain, instead what you have is you have a, a protein in the uh, outer, me well, the membrane of the cell membrane of the bacteria, which pumps protons from the cytoplasm to the extracellular space, uh, extracellular aspect and using ATP. So basically, even in bacteria where you do not have an electron transport chain, they still have this proton gradient. They still have an electrical potential difference across their membrane and also a concentration difference in the concentration of protons in the extracellular space and in the intracellular space. And the way this is achieved is by a pump which takes protons from the cytoplasm of the bacterium and pumps them onto the extracellular aspect of the bacterium. And this pump will be coupled to ATP, so this will be a proton ATPase, which basically is going to hydrolyze ATP down to ADP and inorganic phosphate, and the energy released to do that, it's going to pump the proton onto the extracellular uh, aspect. And now you still build up that proton gradient, even in bacteria which use fermentation rather than ETC as their means of creating ATP. So you can still couple uh, the movement of the drug out of the bacterial cell uh, to the movement of the proton back into the uh, cell down its electrochemical gradient. Okay, uh, so that's how small transport, uh, sorry, small multi-drug resistance transporters work, these SMRs. Now, the other three families of uh, bacterial drug transporters, which I'm going to introduce you to, also work in this way, but we'll see those in the next video.